Hi, my name is Ronnie Doss, and I recently graduated from UCSD. My parents were proud, I felt accomplished, but now like so many others in my situation, I'm trying to understand what to do next. I'm interested in the environment and green policy, but it's hard to determine what's actually useful and what's just a marketing scheme. So I went out to learn from the ground up what local San Diego businesses, industries, farms, and nonprofit groups are doing to make a difference by educating, implementing, or currently using green and sustainable practices. So sit back, relax, and welcome to How Can I Help? The Old Town Native Plant Garden has a volunteer troop that comes in on Sundays, pulls invasive weeds, plants new plants, and cares for the garden itself. The key player in that is Peter St. Clair. We'd like to introduce you to him now. Oh, great. Hi, Hi I'm Peter. Peter. Hi, Peter. How are you doing? Ronnie, Ronnie. it's a pleasure to meet you. Now, I'm not the key player. I have to, <laughs> it's a key team that we have here. Okay. And I'd just like to give you this t-shirt oh. to start our conversation. This is the San Diego River Park Foundation t-shirt from 2007 when we started this garden. Oh, wow. The California Native Plant Society, San Diego chapter, teamed up with the San Diego River Park Foundation and provided about 130 volunteers on our first wow. day, and we got this started. Oh. So I'd like you to have this cool. in uh, you honor of your, uh, your, your showing what we do. Perfect. I'll uh, put this on. I'll be right back. Great. So Peter, why is this a special area for you? Well, there's two things. One, um, my wife Rita died of cancer in 2005, and she was only 45 years old. But she had worked for many years through the California Native Plant Society and through Cuyamaca College uh, Horticulture Program okay. to get the city in within San Diego County and the county to think more about using native plants in public places. And Old Town is about the most public place in all of San Diego County. It has as many visitors each year as Disneyland. Oh, wow. There are millions of people who come through this park, many of whom come right in this entrance here, getting off the trolley. And we thought this was the perfect place to showcase California native plants. It also turned out that our state senator, Christine Kehoe, had passed a bill in the state legislature recognizing the importance of the San Diego River for the history of San Diego. Great. Now you can't see it now, but the San Diego River once flowed right over here, right down in front of us, and along this street in front of the train station. <laughs> so the reason Old Town is so important in California history is that the river was here. There was a Kumeyaay village here called Kosoi, and Kosoi has different uh, interpretations into English. One is the dry place, meaning that when the river flowed and it would flow wildly in the winter, this area stayed dry. And if we walk up the hill, you'll see that we actually go up a hill uh -huh. to a spot that would have been fairly high above the river. Okay. Always. So it oh, always stayed dry. Always dry. <laughs> so this has been a important Native American village and then it became the first settlement in California, the United States part of California, by the Spaniards and the Mexicans. And then later, of course, the Americans came. So still, the reason it was here was that there was a river here. The river was moved in the 1850s, so it would flow into the Pacific Ocean instead of the San Diego Bay. But Senator Kehoe's bill, recognizing the importance of this place, wanted to focus on its history, including its native peoples, its geography, including the river, okay. and its native plants. Oh, great. We all came along just about the same time with similar ideas and all started working together. There was a skeleton of a native plant garden here that was planted when this McCoy house was reconstructed. That original house was built somewhere in the 1860s or 1870s. And it was actually built over the remains of two vastly more important uh, Spanish Mexican adobes. <laughs> and believe it or not, the families that built those adobes are still here in Old Town. Wow. 
and one of our Native Plant Society members, who is also the state park ecologist, is a descendant of those very people whose adobes were there. Really? So our remarkable thing that we have discovered as we have developed this Native Plant Garden is that we have all sorts of people who have been here pretty much since time immemorial because there are still many Kumeyaay Indian families living here in Old Town. Wow, that's something so I wouldn't have considered. This is a pretty amazing place. And in terms of its importance for California history, mm -hmm. this is the Plymouth Rock of California. Really? This is the place where California, as we know it, was really founded by Spanish and Mexican settlers. Although the Indians had been here for many centuries. So if you let me walk you through the garden, we can talk a little bit about these plants and why we chose them. Perfect, that sounds like a great idea. Okay, good. Yeah. Right. Ronnie, I got something really amazing to show you. You know when you came in and you saw I was planting a plant? Yeah. Well, this is a, called a coast live oak. Coast and in Latin, oak. for all these people, this is Quercus agrifolia. Um, that'll help the Native Plant Society members truly identify it. <laughs> now, we mentioned before that the plants here were of supreme importance to the Kumeyaay Indians. Yeah. And the coast live oak is perhaps the most important food plant for the Kumeyaay. Really? And now I noticed just an amazing thing today that I had not seen before. If you can look down here, these are seedlings of coast live oaks, and they're coming up from acorns that fell from this tree. Oh, okay. Now, you can see there's the beginning of a little flower here. Um, here we go. This is, a, this is the flower of a coast live oak. And that wow. flower, if it's pollinated and everything goes well, will turn into an acorn. Okay. And the, here's an acorn left oh. over from last year. Here we go. That's kind of a little one, but that's a coast live oak acorn. Now, the, the California Indians cracked the shell of this and then took out the, the center. out the center and then they ground that up and then they leached out the tannins in there and then they ended up with a kind of a flower Oh, okay. and they made cakes from it oh. uh, and that was the most important part of their diet so I am absolutely thrilled to see these post live oak seedlings coming up because it shows that this plant which which was planted as part of the or the, uh, the construction of the garden is doing real well yeah so that's a phenomenal thing. We planted a number of these coast live oaks here, and they really represent the backbone of the Native American uh, culture. Wow, that's really interesting. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. No, what, which one is this? What is, well, do you recognize it from any garden you've ever been in, or along the roadsides? Is this the is this the California poppy? That's the California <laughs> poppy. And what's important about the California poppy to the state of California? Wow. That's right. Very good. <laughs> so this is growing here because we planted a few seeds. Okay. Uh, but it's doing well and it's it's seeding itself every year. And pretty soon this whole area will be covered with poppies oh, that wow. come from previous year's seed. Beautiful. Amazing. Now, do you know this one? No, this one I do not. Okay, this is yarrow. Yeah, right. And the Latin is Achillea millifolium. And Achillea refers to Achilles. The Greek hero. Now, do you remember what Achilles' problem was? Uh, his heel. His heel. Yeah. Well, his mother, when he was little, dipped him in yarrow to give him protection. It wasn't the river sticks, it was yarrow. Oh. And she held him by the heel. So this plant grows all over the world. And it is also native here in San Diego. Now, this particular yarrow came from a two inch pot from the California Native Plant Society plant sale a couple of years ago. And I planted them in my yard and they spread and I yank them up by the roots and I stick them in a little pot and leave them for a little while then I bring them down here and plant them and they spread. Oh wow. So it's a great way to get California native plants to grow. We have this one that self seeds. We have this one that re reproduces incredibly easy from root cuttings. Okay. So, so when you're restoring, these are some of the go-to plants to really know that uh, an ecosystem is working? Yes, uh, they get going really quick, they mm -hmm. cover a lot of ground, they prevent a lot of weeds from coming up, and they're very pretty. Oh, perfect, yeah. So <laughs> another All plant that we've planted, this is called deer grass. Deer grass, okay. And deer grass was one of the, say, five really important basket-making plants for the Kumeyaay Indians. 
Okay. Now what they did is in the fall, this will send up a long stalk. Okay. And the kumei reached down and they snapped it off and then they took it back and along with a number of other plants, all of which were growing here, mm -hmm. they made baskets which were probably the most important cultural element in their lives. Because oh. the baskets were very important for leaching the tannins out of that acorn mush that we oh, talked about earlier. Okay. Oh, wow. So we planted quite a few of these deer grass and we're very hopeful that as our willows mature and our deer grass mature and some of our other basket making plants, that we'll have Native Americans here teaching <laughs> kids and adults how to make baskets. Oh, that's cool. That's a great idea to have. Come to an area that looks like a meadow. Okay. And our goal here is to try and restore the idea of a meadow. Meadow. Okay. A meadow. Now, these are some of the meadow wildflowers that we have been growing here long ago. This is a flax. 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 This is a gum gumweed. This is a great plant. Did you see all these little babies? Uh -huh. Those are all gumweeds. Oh wow. And they're out competing the other weeds. <laughs> now when we say weed, it's a native plant. So oh, okay. it's doing fine. Let's do that. Yeah. Now here's this is a willow. And this willow is, is about to flower. Okay. Now the willow is a plant that generally likes quite a bit of moisture. Mm, okay. You know, our California native plants, we think of them often as being just drought tolerant. Yeah. Well, many are not. Many of our California native plants actually live in very wet places. Okay. Now, if you'll remember, I said this used to be where the San Diego River ran. Oh, okay. So this was pretty wet. Yeah. And uh, these willows are a sign that there's uh, a, a good groundwater. Okay. Now, the other signs of that is we have in the background, we'll, we'll get a little farther, we have cottonwood trees. Okay. And we have these um, sycamore trees here. Sycamore So trees. our willows, our cottonwood, here's our cottonwood right here. Oh, okay. Perfect. Okay. So our willow, our cottonwood, and our sycamore are sort of our indicators that this was a river area. Okay. Okay? Perfect. So Ronnie, I'd like to tell you a little bit about more about why we selected certain plants for this garden. We talked about how important they were to the Kumeyaay Indians. Yeah. Well, we also wanted to get plants that actually grew here a long time ago. That makes sense. Uh, and we want to make sure they're native plants and that they were native here before people started gardening with them. Okay. So we had a pollen study from the University of San Diego. Oh. And do you know what a pollen study is? No. What is a pollen study? Well, the University of San Diego archaeology students dug down uh -huh. in the earth to where they thought maybe the level of the river was back in the 1700s. Oh, okay. And they then took that soil back and they kind of washed it and filtered it and they found little grains of pollen. And the pollen oh. are what flowers make um, in order to reproduce. Okay. Uh, before you can have a seed, you have to have pollen and the pollen is pollinated by okay. an insect or a butterfly or a, something like that. Seed. So the pollen study tell you what kind of plants we're growing here because each oh. little grain of pollen is unique to its species. Interesting, yeah. That so sense. we learned that the cottonwoods were here, that the sycamores were here, that the coast live oaks were here. We also went to the Kumeyaay Indian elders. Now they still live mostly in northern Baja, California. Okay. And they still use plants and herbs not just to eat, but also for medicines, for culture, uh, for many aspects of their daily life. And we were offered the services of a gentleman named Richard Bugby. Richard is uh, not a Kumeyaay, he's a Luceno, which is another tribe here in San Diego, but he has studied with the Kumeyaay elders, he's learned their language, and they taught him about plants. Oh. So his official title is Ethnobotanist. Ethnobotanist. Any idea what that means? <laughs> well, ethno from ethnic, or okay. people, yes. and botany from the study of plants. People. So ethnobotanists study how people use plants. Oh, wow. So Richard helped us select plants, along with our pollen study. Cool, that's yeah. a great way to figure out who, what to use and how to exactly make sure that these are native plants. Well, that was our goal. We wanted this to be an accurate depiction of what was here before 
the Spanish and Mexican settlers and before the American settlers came. So when people come to uh, a place like this and then when they leave, what kind of idea or message do you hope that they gain when they uh, when they leave after seeing uh, native plant garden? Well, first and foremost, that the native plants are beautiful. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Second, that they could envision planting them in their gardens or talking to their city or county about planting them in their neighborhood. Um, third, that this place has really important history to the state of California and that that history goes way back yeah. thousands of years with the Kumeyaay Indians who lived here. Wow. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. Well, you're welcome, really Ronnie. Us out. You're welcome. And uh, thanks to California Native Plants Society and you guys for enhancing San Diego. To find out more about all our wonderful guests, or to get some information about this issue, be sure to log on to www.howcanihelpsandiego.com. See you there, Eco Diego fans.